Welcome to A Daily Spark. I'm Dr. Angela Chester, and my guest today is Marinda Weisinger, and she is out of the Albany, Georgia area. We're talking mother-daughter relationships today, and I know that I'm fired up about that because most of us are moms, Yay. most of us are daughters, so mm -hmm. this should be great conversation. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Marinda. She is a woman with purpose. She is promoting love, respect, honesty, and forgiveness. She and her daughter are co-founders of Mother and Daughter Enterprise and we're going to talk a little bit more about that and of course what I love is that she does mentoring programs as well. She has devised programs of study that gear toward empowering and equipping young women and you know I love to empower others. So let's go on and jump into this conversation. So Miranda, I want to ask you, um, of course, what, what I'd like to ask everyone, and that is, yeah, we have these bios that say all of these wonderful things mm -hmm. that we do. It lists our education and all of that. But who are you in your own words? Well, first of all, let me thank you for having uh, me on your show. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am a mother. That's who I am first. I'm a mother. I was a teen mom and I was able to overcome a lot of the stereotypes and limitations that were put on um, most teen moms. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very excited about that and thankful to God for him allowing me to raise the daughter who I raised. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a mother first more than anything. And of course, as you read, I'm a mentor. I have um, several girls who I call my daughters. I'm a surrogate mom to them. Um, I've allowed them to come into my home. Some of them have actually moved in. <laughs> um, but now I am grateful to say that everyone who I've allowed to come in are now out on their own with their own apartments, their own careers. Um, so it's been great. However, I do still have many um, young ladies under my wing. So mm -hmm. I'm a mom and a mentor. That's what I love, love, love to talk about um, and to say when people ask me who I am. Those are my first two things. I'm a mom and a mentor. Mm -hmm. And of course, a woman who loves God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love that. Now, I, I know that you um, have a way of referring to yourself as a mother-daughter relationship seamstress. Yes. And I think that that is um, so wonderful because it it allows others to understand that you understand mm -hmm. how the relationship is interwoven. Yes. That this is a very beautiful thing that they can, though you are two separate things, yes. coming together into one. And, and I, I really admire that, that you've done that. So for, for those who may not understand um, about being a mentor, mm -hmm. what, does a, what does a mentor do? How do you determine that you want to be a mentor? Well, actually, you don't determine if you want to be a mentor. <laughs> Mentors are sought out. Okay. So there is not one girl who I've, I've had under my wing who I've actually approached and said, can I mentor you? Mm -hmm. Not one. So if you are a mentor, you should have people approaching you. They should see something in you that says you have something that I believe I need. So that's how I became a mentor to many because I had a lot of young girls, teenagers and young women, college women, who sought me out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I'm a very big proponent of letting your light shine. Yes. And I think that that really, that really speaks to that, that there's something that they see in you. Yes, absolutely. And they want, and they want that light. Absolutely. So, you know, bravo for that. Keep, keep that yes. up. Thank now, you. Now, when, when we think of the word relationship, so mm -hmm. many times we think relationship and we're thinking like husband and wife. Of course. Or, you know, we're thinking this romantic yes. relationship. Yes. But when it comes to mothers, 
daughters, mm -hmm. and then this word relationship. Yes. How does that all blend together? Well, it blends together the same way as a husband and a wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. friends, um, love, respect, honesty, and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All four of those things are needed within any relationship. And we can't leave it out when it comes to mother and daughter relationships. That's right. So there's a lot of love that you want to have. Daughters want that love, that genuine love from their moms mm -hmm. and vice versa. And also with respect, although moms always say you have to respect me because I'm the mama. Guess what? Daughters want to have some level of respect as well. They want to be respected. They don't want to be called out of their names. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things that we shouldn't allow to come out of our mouths as moms so that we can respect our daughters. And then you have honesty. We both need to maintain some sort of honesty so that way that the, so that way the relationship can continue to strengthen and forgiveness. Who doesn't need that in a relationship? <laughs> in every relationship, we need forgiveness. So on both on both sides. So those are the four principles that I know every relationship needs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times as moms, we kind of tend to not think that we need those four things. The same things we need in a relationship with our husband or our significant other. We need that with our daughters as well. And I'm so glad that you said that um, daughters want that respect. Too. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think that some people forget yeah. that um, it's reciprocal. Absolutely. You know? That, um, yeah, you might be at the top. Right, but right. But the people down at the bottom still, yeah. still want the, th the same things that you do. Yes. That's a, that's a really, really great reminder. And, and thank you for, for mentioning that. Now, would you say that as um, you grow in your relationship or as you age physically, mm -hmm. that your relationship should change, your relationship must change, or that it simply will change? It will change. Mm -hmm. I'm a witness. My daughter is, um, I can't tell her age because okay. she's, a, <laughs> she's an educator in the Atlanta public school system mm -hmm. and she teaches high school. Mm -hmm. So I definitely can't tell her age. Mm -hmm. However, this is what I will say. I've had to learn to adjust to where life was taking us. You know, um, I've always been accustomed to being mommy, you know, and she still calls me mommy, which I'm so happy about it. <laughs> um, and I realized that as she started to mature, that there were some things that I wasn't going to be able to do anymore or to say anymore. Mm -hmm. I was going to have to allow life to teach her certain lessons. I have to make sure that what I trained up Mm -hmm. that it was going to still maintain everything that I had instilled in her. So the Bible says to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart from it. Right. So I'm holding on to that word, mm -hmm. you know, and she has definitely made me a proud, proud mommy. Um, but our life has definitely is going through some changes. We're relearning each other, mm -hmm. you know? Like yeah, We're relearning each other. Now, if there is a teen mom right now mm -hmm. that is listening and saying, hey, all of that sounds like me, I wanna turn out to be the best mom that I would be. What is a tip or a bit of advice that you would give to her about how to get through this journey called life? Well, considering that I was a teen mom, I would definitely recommend that you choose to break patterns. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. never too late. It's never too late to become whoever you want to become. I was the pattern breaker for the women in my family. And my daughter went on to break patterns and to become the first college graduate in our family. So that's what I would recommend. The first thing I would recommend is to know that you can break patterns. You can do anything and be anyone you want to be. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes, you can be anyone that you want to be. Well, viewers, we need to take a commercial break right here. So don't worry. When we get back, we will continue this conversation. Mother, daughter, relationships. We'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Daily Spark. I am Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Miranda Weisinger, and she is a woman that is on fire when we talk about mother-daughter relationships and how to bring that balance back. She is a mentor and doing so much to help, I think, build up these relationships that we have. Yeah. In today's society, we really need to bring more togetherness. We need Absolutely. to be more unified. Um, we have so much that is pulling us apart. Yes. Um, we need to make sure that we are together. One of the things that you do is um, you're an author. Yeah. So um, what made you decide that you needed to not only write down your ideas or write down your thoughts, but what made you determine this needed to be put in a book for others to be able to read? Great question. Well, like I said before, I have quite a few mentees mm -hmm. and um, some of them decided to come and live with me and um, others just made my home a place of refuge for them. And I decided to, instead of having everyone to come and embrace me, I wanted them to start embracing their moms. You know, it was difficult to see girls that only wanted me and didn't want to have a relationship with their mom. Mm -hmm. So I decided, let me put this in a book. That way, if I put it in a book, maybe a mom or two will grab it, <laughs> or three or four hundred mm -hmm. will grab it and mm -hmm. say, let me read this so that way I can win my daughter or I can mm -hmm. keep the relationship, the great relationship going as time goes on and as my daughter matures because the book basically is for um, all ages, all generations of women who may want a better relationship with their mom, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a really good idea. Sometimes we, um, we want the information, we want the instruction, yes. but we don't want anyone to know <laughs> that we want it, that right. we're trying to yeah. take it all in. Yeah. So perhaps I can sneak and read the book and, <laughs> you know, at night and, and it'd be, you know, my, yes. my reading material. So yes. very, very smart about that. Now, of course, as, as daughters ourselves, mm -hmm. um, we have been on both sides. Absolutely. As moms, we've Absolutely. been on both sides, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so I want to ask you this particular question, and that is, what are some of the lessons that you've learned as a daughter that you wanted to make sure that you passed on to your daughter? I love this question. Let me tell you why I love this question because it's so near and dear to my heart. Growing up, I didn't have a great relationship with my mom. Um, I was the daddy's girl and I gave my mom a hard time because as long as my daddy was at home, I can do anything I wanted to do. <laughs> So as a daughter um, that has matured and I look back over my life and I'm saying, oh my gosh, I was a mess with my mom. And it taught me to teach my daughter that your, your mom, your mommy is not going to be perfect. There's going to be some things that I'm going to do that you're not going to like, mm -hmm. you know, the same way that I felt about my mom. And as you mature, you'll realize that some of those things that I was trying to teach you, the same way mm -hmm. as my mom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll come back eventually and say, wow, you were right. Mm -hmm. You were absolutely right. So that's what I've learned as a mom and that I've had to tell my daughter, I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And you'll realize later some of the things that I'm trying to explain to you now, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll pick it up later and come back and say thanks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's so funny how um, so many times we hear mothers, um, or I'll say it this way: grandmothers will say, "Wait till you have your own children, and then you understand." <laughs> and then when yes. you become the mother, yes. and we're dealing with the grandchild, yes. then it's like, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> mom was so right." And yes, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely quite interesting how that all comes into play. Absolutely, I love it. And it's absolutely. like, yeah, God definitely has a has a sense of humor. He right? does it's have like, a sense of wait, humor. Just wait till it all wraps back around. I love it. Yeah. Now, um, when you give uh, presentations, and um, one phrase that you use is 
is to fit better. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Um, fit better is also a phrase that we could use in our marriage counseling yes. and everything else. And I yes. love that. Um, what do you what do you mean by fit better? And how do we need to understand that, again, both sides of the coin, as a mom, how do we understand fit better? But as a daughter, how do we understand fit better? Well, um, recognizing that you can fit better is basically admitting that there's something wrong. You know, on social media, what we do is, you know, we find a lot of people that are out here and they have these selfies together with their mom and they're throwing mm -hmm. up the peace sign mm -hmm. and they're laughing and having all of this um, wonderful outer appearance, but behind the scene, they don't like each other. So we have to recognize, one or the other has to recognize, wow, we can fit better. We need to fit better. Every relationship is a custom, a custom made relationship. So my relationship with my daughter may be different from the relationship with someone else and their daughter. So everyone has to take the opportunity to know that their relationship is custom made and it needs to fit better. So everyone has their own different fits. I love it. I love it. That's right. Mother-daughter relationships are custom made. It is not one size fits not all. Not one size fits I all. I love it. <laughs> or viewers, we need to take a quick break, but don't worry. We'll come back and continue this great conversation. you have a new book? I do. I I'm so excited. Tell me a little bit about it. <laughs> well, it's, it's really all about my journey, you know, where I went from having just poor health, really, mm -hmm. and not even knowing that I had poor health. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just evolved, and before I knew it, here I am writing a book, and it took me 12 years to write that book. I believe you. <laughs> Sounds like me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you feel like no one would want to hear your story? I just felt like uh, who is going to, matter of fact, who told me to write this book in the first place? Right. Why am I doing this? I understand. But, you know, um, after a while, I realized that things were definitely falling into its prospective mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. so and what's I'm your excited. book about again? My book is about mother and daughter relationships. Ooh, yeah, yeah, my daughter that. is an educator. I was a teen mom, mm -hmm. but I managed to um, just go ahead and get rid of all of the stereotypes mm -hmm. by the grace of God. I was With about his to say, help, yes. all glory belongs to him. Yes. She became the first college graduate from our family oh, out of I love 15 it. people. Right here. <laughs> yeah, she graduated from Cum Laude from Howard University oh, and now wow. she's a teacher. Oh. And our relationship was so amazing mm -hmm. and everybody was saying, you gotta put this in a book. You oh, have to help other I mothers and daughters. So, I love yeah. it. Yeah. There's yeah. so many stereotypes that's out there. Yeah. And it sounds is. like you broke all of them. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and guess what? The stereotype of small women or small people being zeros and twos, like you were saying, as far as being healthy, Yes. I can totally relate. <laughs> I'm like, I run a mile and I'm out of breath, but yet I'm small mm -hmm. and I'm, I can definitely say that I need to exercise a little bit more and drink more water. <laughs> drink more water. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I really so. enjoyed that when yes. I was hearing you talk about mm -hmm. it. And I love your story. Thank you. I love it. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Daily Spark. I am Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Miranda Weisinger, and we are talking mother-daughter relationships and how we fit better in that relationship. I want to ask you, now that you are a mom and you've been a mom for quite some time, because mm -hmm. um, you have an adult daughter now, yes. so you know you have a little experience yes. there <laughs> about the pros and the cons and the ups and the downs and everything um, that we need to do. You have been able to figure out with your daughter the things that were successful yes. and the things that perhaps you needed to tweak just mm -hmm. a little bit. When well, mm -hmm. we're open and honest about that, um, I think that we really and truly are able to help others Absolutely. grow. Absolutely. So what would be some advice that you would give to the moms that say, hey, I'm having some challenges with my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, what do I need to do differently? Or maybe I need to start doing some things. What's your advice on that? Well, the first thing I would recommend is to know 
that you can fit better. So once you know you can fit better, mm -hmm. then I recommend that you maybe set up a little bit of um, coffee time, tea time right. with your daughter. Mm -hmm. So that way you can break some things down and allow her to tell you some of the things that she may be feeling. Mm -hmm and some of the things that you may be feeling because honesty is so important. Never to think that you know you were the perfect mom so she's wrong. Right. Never to think that, um, let your daughter think that she's, she's the perfect daughter. Everything is right, everything that I do is right. Mm -hmm. So that way you all can come and have a personal time, personal conversation and talk about what may be wrong within the relationship, what you may change, what you may like to change in the relationship. So that way you can move forward from there. I love that, I love that. Yeah. Um, so many times we talk about boundaries in relationships. Mm -hmm. And usually, again, we think boundaries, we think relationships, we think romantic relationship, husband and wife. But there's also boundaries when it comes to mothers and daughters. Yes. So what is an example of like a healthy boundary or how do you even set up boundaries to begin with? <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that um, as a parent, my brother, sorry brother, I'm gonna put you out there. My brother <laughs> used to say, she's scared of you and that's not good. And then you would have other people saying, you're so strict, but mm -hmm. the daughter I raised, I was happy mm -hmm. that I raised her based on this quote that I love. Mm -hmm. It says, good fences creates good neighbors. Mm -hmm. So if you set boundaries within the relationship, and tell you know your daughter what you expect when your curfew is like when my daughter went away to Howard University and she came home in her freshman year she thought well you know I'm in college so I can just come in at three or four from the club <laughs> what's wrong with that I do it in college mm -hmm. no no <laughs> in my house this is the rules and we still abide by those rules but she was accustomed to me setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. I had rules in my home. And now that she's an adult woman mm -hmm. and she's also an educator, she understands mm -hmm. now that you have to have rules. You have to set up those boundaries early. Drinking and smoking with your child, doing mm -hmm. things of that nature that this is just my own opinion that I don't believe that parents should do with their child. Mm -hmm. It kind of sets you up for what could later on be a strenuous relationship mm -hmm. because they may become too comfortable or too common. Right. So good fences creates good mm -hmm. neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure there's someone who's nodding their head saying, that's right, we have very traditional relationships, even though we, we may have modern conversation yes. with each other, there's yeah. still the need Absolutely. for having that traditional relationship. Yeah. And that I'm still mom. Right. And you still have to respect the place yes. of me being, I want to be cool with you. Right, I want you right. cool with me. Exactly. But I'm still mom. Yes. And, I can, and I can understand that. I can understand that. Now, as a mentor, mm -hmm. would you say that a daughter needs to make sure that her relationship with her mother is always moving in in a forward in a forward direction um, how does she make sure that the mentor doesn't take the place of her mother that's a great question because I have to make sure that I set boundaries mm -hmm. because if there is a void that the daughter is filling with her mom, mm -hmm. she gravitates to me even more. Right. So really the mentor has to know the type of boundaries to set um, and know that you don't want to take the place of this, per this child's, well, or adult woman's mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. and. That way you can make sure that you are also offering the daughter some tips. This is what you may need to do with your mom. That's what I do with a lot of my girls. Mm -hmm. How about you go and take your mom, drive up to where she lives, because a lot of them are away in college where I am, drive mm -hmm. up to where she is and maybe take her out to lunch. Call her more often. Mm -hmm. Instead of calling me, try calling her mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what she has to say first, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think that your mom is gonna say something different from what your mentor says, but a lot of times you'll find out 
we're probably saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe in a different way, but it's probably the same advice. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's really funny that you say that because so many times, um, when we look back over our lives, especially once we get a little bit older, and we realize that our mothers told us to, to do a particular thing, and, and we didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But you could have a brother or a sister or an aunt or even a really just close friend mm -hmm. say, hey, you need to do that, and you go, oh, sure. Yeah. And, and, and you do it just off of the first suggestion. And your yes, mother's sitting there going, I have been banging my head. Absolutely. And asking you to do this, and you absolutely. would not do it. And that's, that's, that's really funny. But it does take a village, though. It does. It takes a village. It so does. maybe I won't get across to you, but maybe this village will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a wonderful that that you mentioned that and, and having that village. Yes. So um, kind of backing out a little bit and looking at the members that make up our village. Mm -hmm. um, are there any particular personality types, or are there any particular types of people that need that we need to make sure that we have around us Absolutely. when we're building this vi this village? Who yes. do we look for? Positive people. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Positive people, people that are going somewhere, people that you want your daughter to see and say, I really like what they're doing with their life. Mm -hmm. I really like the way they present themselves. Mm -hmm. I try my best to surround my daughter around positive people and people that are movers and shakers. Right. And she has definitely become a part of all of us. All of us, when we see her, we see ourselves in her. And I can't, definitely can't say that I did it all by myself. It took mm -hmm. a village to raise her, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to um, first give my congratulations because you said a very, very important thing, and that is one that you were um, someone who broke the cycle. And your daughter is a college graduate, and she's gone on to fulfill all of the dreams and hopes and aspirations of your family. Mm -hmm. um, one. Great job. Bless Great you. job. Because Bless I think you. that many times people um, take that for granted, and that is not something that we should take for granted. Not at um, all. Be that you are the first person or you're the hundredth person in the family, yes. it really and truly does take that village to make yes. sure that each generation goes on. So thank yes. you so much for being an inspiration, not only to your daughter and in your family, Bless but for, you. for those of us that are that are watching. So good job. Bless so, you. Thank my you. Very, my very last little tidbit is there that I ask you this. What is is um, one word that you think that someone um, who has listened, who has enjoyed the program today, what's one word that they should take away from today, that they should hold in their heart, and it should be their action word for, for this week or for this month? Hmm. One word would be forgive. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many relationships that are torn apart because we won't forgive. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mom, if you have a daughter, or anyone that you love, choose this week to forgive. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Thank you so much, Miranda, for being on the program today. Thank you for having me. So those of our <laughs> viewers who want to stay in contact with you, how do we find out more about you? You can find out more about me on my website, taylormademom.com. Again, that's taylormademom.com. Thank you so much. And viewers, thank you for joining me for Daily Spark. And as always, I hope that you have an awesome day, not just today, but each and every day. Until next time, everyone. Be awesome.